Tomorrow, the County Board of Supervisors will meet in a closed session to discuss the options if San Diego moves into the purple tier, the worst tier of the state system on Tuesday. That would mean some businesses will be forced to close again or modify operations again. News 8's Elizabeth Sanchez spoke to the owner of one local business that could be affected. Fit is one of the businesses that may have to close if the county moves into a higher tier on Tuesday. This Solana Beach location is the smallest of the Fit Athletic Centers. Altogether, they have 200,000 square feet. That's millions of dollars of rent each month, whether they're open or closed. When Fit Athletic Clubs opened up after closing in March, they were ready. They followed the CDC's guidelines and moved some things outdoors. Then came news they can operate at 10% capacity. You can't even uh, afford to turn on your electricity, pay your rent, you know, bring back all your staff. How are you supposed to do that at 10% of what you were operating at before? Even so, owner Scott Lutwak was hopeful, but with the threat of closing again next week, he's now frustrated. Big companies are going to survive this, but the small to mid-sized companies are, are not. And so, you know, maybe the world, some of the world doesn't care if small businesses don't survive. Some of the County Board of Supervisors are pushing for alternatives involving legal action against the state or other measures. They're meeting in another closed door session and Lutwick plans to be there rallying outside along with other businesses. At Rudford's restaurant in North Park, there's a sign on the door asking customers to stand with them so they can stay open. We're throwing money at it on a daily basis. We went, we ran out of PPP money. We're done. If the order comes to close, they'll defy it. This is not a political stance. This is about survival. The owner of FIT says they haven't decided what action they'll take if the county doesn't do anything, but they say working out keeps you healthy and they're following the CDC guidelines with stringent cleanings and social distancing. Alicia. All right, Elizabeth, thank you. The state metrics won't be updated until Tuesday. Meantime, here are today's numbers from the county. 284 new cases and more than 9,000 tests, a positive rate of 3%. 49 of those cases are connected to San Diego State University, including their first case among faculty and staff. One new outbreak was reported, making 21 in the past week. No new deaths were reported. The testing site at Mar Vista High School in Imperial Beach will be closed this upcoming week to add more testing capacity at SDSU. That site at the Alumni Center on 55th Street is open to the public as well as students. No appointment is needed. California's Employment Development Department says it will be taking a two-week reset. That means now new claims will be, no new claims will be accepted, I should say, until Monday, October 5th. Officials say they need to update EDD's identity verification system to be able to process claims faster and more safely. Existing filers will not be affected, and new claims made after the reset can be backdated. Neighbors in East County are doing everything they can to find a man who went missing from his home in Santee. The Sheriff's Department says it got the missing person report yesterday morning. His name is Rick Austin. He's 77 years old. Organizers for the search say his health is at risk without medication. He has no driver's license, but reportedly left in a teal-colored 2005 Saturn SUV. Contact the Sheriff's Department if you have any information. The weather has cooled off over the, past, over the past few days, but we're still in the midst of rattlesnake season. It's a lesson a Scripps Ranch man learned the hard way this week. News 8 Steve Fiorina tells us he's fine today, but only after two long days in a hospital bed. Chuck Deckert and his wife were taking their dogs for a walk toward Hilltop Park here in Rancho Penasquitas. It was early Monday evening, and they got a surprise. They had gone just a few steps. I felt something on my heel that felt like a bee sting. So I looked down and I saw the two puncture wounds. And I thought, well, that's odd. And I looked behind me and saw a baby rattlesnake slithering across the sidewalk, headed back for the grass. They ran for the car then in the Sharp Memorial Emergency Room. We've seen many videos of rattlesnakes, their speed, strikes that seem to take milliseconds the danger that can be lurking just inches away. And for Chuck, it was suddenly there, not terribly painful, but certainly there was discomfort. His ankle swelled immediately as the venom quickly spread. Within just a couple minutes, 
I started to um, feel tingling, a numbness, uh, my tongue and my lips. And um, within a couple minutes more, my entire face and my hands. Note the markings around the wounds. Doctors mixed up a batch of antivenom and injected the patient. He had to be monitored closely and was hospitalized for two days, finally released to go home Wednesday night. And yes, he's taken the dogs out in the days since. I probably should be nervous, but I'm not. We've, I've already been out and walking the dogs, but this time with hiking boots on. Chuck works for Sharp Healthcare, so he wasn't surprised at his excellent treatment. Swelling is gone, still a few bruises. Steve Fiorina, News 8, back to you, Alicia. Thanks, Steve. Fortunately, he's okay. Scary situation. Good reminder to be on the lookout, especially during the hottest part of the day. But good news, things are supposed to cool down countywide. So will that trend keep going into the week? Meteorologist Sean Stiles joins us now with a first look at your microclimate forecast. Well, Alicia, we are in store for some pretty fine weather here. Slightly warmer as we get to, say, Wednesday. But take a look at this forecast as we look at the te today's temperatures. 77, 76 the average. So today's almanac looking pretty good. And we did see a big cool down. We're talking about anywhere from 6 to 11 degrees cooler in places like El Cajon, 9 degrees cooler in Alpine, 8 degrees cooler in Escondido, as well as in the uh, Ramona area. So everyone enjoying the cooler weather. The forecast looking nice, 76, 77, a little bit warmer than where we should be. And then we're going to jump back into the low 80s, but fear not. It's only one, maybe two days, and then we cool back down again. For you folks in those inland microclimates, ah, we will warm it back up again. Now, the average for this time of year is 88, as you can see there on the top right-hand side of your screen. We'll push a little bit above that on Tuesday and Wednesday. But as I said, temperatures coming back down as another trough sets up over the Pacific Northwest, and that'll bring us back to where we should be by, say, Thursday, Friday, and on into the weekend. I'll have a look at that eight-day microclimate forecast in just a bit. All right, just in time for fall, Sean. Thank you. For the first time since 2006, the San Diego Padres are officially headed to the postseason. Here's John Howard with more. A simple scenario for the Padres going into their game today. Win and they clinch their first postseason berth in 14 years. Lose and try again tomorrow. The Padres offense was scoreless until the sixth inning when Will Myers rips the cover off the ball to dead center. A three run bomb. Friars lead three to one. The Padres are just four outs away from the playoffs when Emilio Pagan gives up a two run home run to Dylan Moore. That ties the game at three, and we're going to go to extra innings. Both teams score a run in the 10th inning, and in the 11th, the Padres are fed up with it, score three times, and go on to beat the Seattle Mariners to clinch their first playoff berth in nearly a decade and a half. Swing and a miss. He struck him out for the first time in 14 years. The San Diego Padres have clinched their spot in the postseason. So high drama at Petco Park. The Padres come away with the win, get their first playoff berth in 14 years. Can't wait for the postseason to get here. John Howard here in the home studio. Let's go back to you on set now. This season and tonight's big win have Padre fans super excited. News 8's Tim Blodgett caught up with some of them today to talk about the team's success. Well, San Diego, it's finally happened. After a 14-year drought, the Padres finally make the playoffs. And fans tell me what that means for their city. Garcia hits onto the ground to first. Muncie is going to come home with it. And safe at the plate, getting in from third is Profar. This year's Padres team just feels different. This is driven to deep left field. It looks like they're in every game. It's really awesome to look down the lineup and see every player, you know, over like 270 average. Which makes it painful that on a day where the Padres could clinch their first playoff berth in the last 14 years, fans aren't packing the bleachers and in the area around Petco Park. That's a base hit down the right field line. You have to go all the way back to 2006, when a Padres team led by Trevor Hoffman lost the NLDS series to the St. Louis Cardinals 3-1. The St. Louis Cardinals advance. The Dodgers nine, the Padres nothing. It's In the 14 years after, the Padres cycled through years of mediocrity, with a total record of 966 wins to 1,141 losses. 
Myers drives this to deep right center field. The city has been crying out for a decent team to take the diamond. And this year, they might just have one. We're young, we're energetic, you know, um, the team fans with a lot of passion. I think these fans deserve more. A lot of people just want a winning team. They don't have to win the World Series or even the National League uh, pennant, but they need to be competitive. They should not be dominated by the Dodgers. And their predictions for the future? I, I think we'll definitely beat Miami, <laughs> you know, first round. We'll definitely beat uh, LA, you know, second round, and you know, hopefully we'll be in the, play in the World Series for sure. It's a team that finally matches the beauty of San Diego. Go Padres. Go Padres. Tim Blodgett, News 8.